okay so I'm gonna wrap up this uh, long flake series uh, this is the last video in the series I promise <laughs> um, the thing I want to go over is um, something that uh, some of you guys might say well you know spring theory is all fine and good but it, it doesn't really explain uh, percussion very well especially with uh, uh, like a hammerstone hitting a, the workpiece with the workpiece having very little support uh, and it, you know it pertains to and let's just draw this better here it pertains to both this type of hammerstone on the workpiece or a stone anvil with a uh, the workpiece actually being hit onto the stone to try to split it. Uh, this is like cobble splitting, which is um, done this way, or it's done with uh, bipolar with a bipolar technique. Okay, you can split this cobble. Okay, this is your workpiece actually. You can split it by either slamming it against the anvil with your hand, very little support, or you can actually support it on the anvil and then smack it with another stone. Now this spring theory doesn't explain um, these three things where the workpiece has very little support, uh, there's hardly any support. Uh, for this when you you know because you're holding it in your hand and you're slamming it against the anvil what's supporting this or where's the spring um, there's something um, in physics called momentum or inertia or whatever it just says that uh, you know when something travels at a certain speed you multiply that by the mass and you get this tendency to to uh, resist motions once you, you know, traveling at a certain speed, and the more mass you have, the more you resist motions. So that resistance to motion in another direction or in changes in motion is what is actually the spring in these systems. So let's say you have. Uh, your rough workpiece here you come down and strike with a hammerstone okay and you're just resting it on your hand with very light support barely any at all and you strike it extremely fast and it detaches a flake that may run all the way across Where's the spring in that system and how does that work? Well, the spring is actually here in this mass. And it's not really a spring per se, uh, but it does kind of spring into action once this crack is initiated. This mass actually, you know, uh, wants to move that way. When you hit this and it cracks, your flake wants to move this way and this wants to move that way. So, uh, before that crack, these this whole workpiece moves as a as one entity. But when that crack initiates, this piece wants to go that way and this piece wants to go that way. So, this kind of springs into action going that way. Um, but since But since this all happens very fast, it looks like a spring. It really isn't, but it, it kind of acts that way. Uh, it's not going to accelerate in that direction. This one might, but this one won't. But just that those two directions in here cause this crack to, uh, to propagate as if there was a spring in this system. Um, okay. Let's see if I can illustrate that better without sounding too hokey. 
because um, I'm already stun I'm already st starting to sound like I'm making this stuff up. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to. Okay. So with a with a hard hammer stone, or yeah, it's mostly with hard hammer stones, uh, you can initiate this crack very quickly. Uh, soft hammer stones will be slower because the, it crushes more on contact. It actually has more of a uh, twisting motion to the whole system to peel that flake off. But I'm talking about very hard hammer stones. Well, not very hard, but the hard hammer stone is what we're using in this example. Um, and you know, the workpiece is very hard too. There's hardly any compressions or any spring action going on here, so we have to depend on uh, momentum or inertia. Now, when these, when two objects collide, okay, there's an equal and opposing forces. All right, so when you come in here and you strike this one, when they make contact, okay, this one is like it's slamming on the brakes while this one is stomping on the gas. But before everyone can catch up, they're in contact for a millisecond or for a very short period of time. They're actually in contact before this one slams on the brakes entirely and this one uh, stomps on the gas and they and they separate okay so during that time where they they are together there is a possibility of generating a fracture okay so before this actually this is actually usually coming down to swipe across and detach that flag this, you know, this flake will continue traveling this way, and this one will want to go that way. And this all happens during this time where they're in contact with each other, and it's just long enough. This contact time is just long enough to cause that flake uh, to happen, to cause this snap, and this all these things acting together to help this flake travel. Okay, and it's important to use something very hard because you don't you want that crack to initiate cleanly, quickly, and without too much delay. Because the longer you delay in initiating that crack, the more time this guy has to stomp on the gas and this guy has to slam on the brakes. Okay, and if there's too much time in there, they'll separate before uh, before anything happens or before you get a short tiny flake. You want a long flake so that you want to delay this as long as possible. Okay. Now um, what's important here in generating an efficient separation here is to strike fast. Because the more speed you have, the more the uh, momentum has a, uh, uh, let's see, greater speed has a greater effect on momentum. And the more mass you have here, the greater the momentum. And you want a large amount of momentum so that it takes longer to separate. It, the, the, you want a large, not a large, but you want a long period of time in here so that you can make sure that this crack passes through the material uh, without any interference or without any you know significant drop in energy if that makes sense okay all right so I'm not going to go into it any further like I said this is the last video in the series of long flakes uh, that I'm going to illustrate with paper and pencil so I hope that's clear enough, and that's it.